Thank you so much and uh, good afternoon. It's uh, really a great uh, honor and a great pleasure to see you all today and to be able to speak to you because I know that the Oxford Union has really been a, a platform for free speech and uh, for open debate for almost 200 years and for me to be able to speak to you is really an honor because uh, free speech and open society is uh, what NATO is there to defend. That's uh, our core value, is to uh, defend open and free uh, societies. And uh, I would also like to tell you that uh, there are uh, many alumni from uh, Oxford that have, and people who have been members of uh, this union for many years that uh, have served uh, in NATO for many years. Uh, one general called uh, Wesley Clark. He was our supreme allied commander for some years and he is an Oxford uh, Union uh, member. And also my assistant secretary general sitting there, uh, Patrick Turner, uh, uh, he is responsible for operations and he is he's, he's a member of the union. He studied here and he told me just now that he studied medieval history and medieval war and then he started to work for NATO, uh, which was uh, <laughs> Uh, as I say, not only good news. Uh, so, um, my task, or what I will do today, is that I will uh, try to be brief, not too long, uh, and to share with you uh, some reflections on NATO and how NATO is adapting to a new and more uh, demanding security environment. And after that, I'm happy to uh, take questions and uh, answer. So, uh, to have time for that, I will try to be brief. Uh, not covering all the issues, but at least uh, pointing out some of the main challenges we face as, uh, as, uh, as an alliance uh, today. And uh, NATO's core task, being a military and a political alliance, is to defend and protect uh, all allies, uh, 28 member states uh, from Europe and uh, US and Canada. And uh, we do so by uh, so by protecting and defending each other while standing together based on the principle or the idea of uh, one for all and all for one. And uh, this idea or this principle is uh, enshrined in our founding uh, treaty, uh, uh, the Washington Treaty, uh, in something called Article 5, uh, which is our collective defense clause. And the main message there is that an attack on one ally will be regarded as an attack uh, on all allies on the whole alliance. So by standing together and promising to defend each other, we are strong and we have been able to uh, contribute to peace and stability in Europe for almost uh, 70 years and to uh, be the strongest alliance in history, uh, protecting uh, all uh, allied uh, countries. We have, done some, we, have do, we have done so under very different circumstances. Um, for approximately 40 years, uh, we did that uh, uh, during the Cold War. From our foundation in 1949 until the end of the Cold War uh, with the fall of the Berlin, uh, Berlin Wall uh, in 1989 and then uh, later the, uh, the, the dissolution of, uh, of the Soviet uh, Union. But during the Cold War, we had a big confrontation between NATO, uh, the United States uh, on one side, and then the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact uh, on the other side. And we uh, successfully were able to deter the Soviet Union, uh, and the Cold War ended without any shot being fired. And, uh, and uh, we started after the end of the Cold War to try to build a partnership with Russia. Uh, we enlarged uh, more and more of those countries that uh, were previously members of the Warsaw Pact. They became NATO members. And people started also to ask whether we needed NATO anymore uh, because the reason why we existed to confront the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact didn't exist anymore. But then we soon uh, discovered that it was still uh, uh, need uh, still uh, a reason to keep uh, NATO as a strong alliance. 
because uh, we uh, uh, saw that we had instability uh, around our borders close to uh, NATO allies. First in the Balkans, uh, where we had a civil war in the 1990s, or several wars in the 1990s, uh, and NATO uh, moved into uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina with a big military operation. We, we, uh, we went into uh, Kosovo uh, to preserve, uh, or, or to, to, to end the war and to preserve the peace and stability uh, in the Balkans. That was, of course, important for our own security because the fighting and the civil war we saw uh, in the Balkans was also a direct threat to NATO uh, allied uh, countries. Then we moved into, and then we conducted a big military operation in Afghanistan after uh, attacks on the United States, 9-11. We have been fighting uh, uh, piracy of the Horn of Africa, uh, conducted uh, airstrikes in Libya, and we have done what we in the NATO language call crisis management or projecting stability uh, beyond our borders uh, because when our uh, neighbors are stable, then we are more uh, secure. So for about 25 years, we didn't focus so much on collective defense in Europe uh, because the Soviet Union was not there. We didn't see a real threat coming from Russia. Uh, and uh, we focused on uh, crisis management, projecting stability uh, beyond our borders, Afghanistan, the Balkans, and uh, other places in the world. Then the world changed again with uh, a more assertive Russia, uh, with Russia using uh, force first in uh, Georgia, then later on in 2014 against uh, Ukraine, illegally annexing Crimea. And then NATO uh, was called upon uh, again. And then we, uh, we are now faced with a, the double challenge of both uh, continuing uh, to project stability beyond our borders with actually more instability, more violence close to NATO borders, Iraq, Syria, ISIL, uh, North Africa, uh, uh, and Afghanistan is still a challenge for us. So we have to continue to do crisis management, project stability beyond our borders, but at the same time we have to do more collective defense in Europe. Uh, so we have, in a way, uh, not the luxury of choosing either crisis management beyond our borders or collective defense in Europe. We have to do both at the same time. And that's exactly what NATO now is uh, doing. Uh, we are uh, adapting NATO to a new and different world. Uh, we are increasing uh, our strength in Europe. We have uh, implemented the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense since the end of the Cold War. We have uh, uh, increased the readiness and the responsiveness of our forces. We have tripled the size of something we call the NATO Response Force, a force which is able to reinforce to deploy uh, uh, quickly. And then we have also, for the first time, deployed forces, or we are in the process of deploying forces, uh, to the eastern part of the alliance with uh, battle groups in the three Baltic countries and uh, to Poland and also uh, increased presence in the southeast of the alliance. Uh, we do this uh, because uh, we, uh, um, for us it is, of course, the core responsibility is to continue to provide the necessary deterrence uh, uh, to prevent the war, not to provoke a war. And, uh, and uh, uh, we have adapted to a more assertive Russia being uh, responsible for aggressive actions in Ukraine. The important thing to remember is that uh, what NATO does is defensive. It is proportionate and we don't want a new Cold War. We don't seek confrontation with Russia. And uh, we uh, therefore keep the challenge for political dialogue open with Russia. Uh, and we are not strengthening our defense because we want to fight the war, but we are delivering strong deterrence because we know that that's the best way to prevent a war. Um, we are, at the same time, we are also now starting to increase defense spending because this, this has a cost. Uh, so uh, 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 we decided at our summit uh, in Wales in 2014 that we needed to invest more in our defenses. 
Um, some countries already meet the NATO target of spending 2% or more on defense. The UK is among those countries. The United States is another. Uh, but most of the NATO allies do not spend 2%. They spend less than 2% on, of GDP on defense. So one of my, or perhaps my main priority since I became Secretary General of NATO back in 2014 has been to urge member allies to invest more in defense. Uh, the good news is that they have actually started to do so. After many years of decline, defense spending has started to increase and, uh, and uh, 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 there's a long way to go. Uh, there's still uh, much to do, but at least it is a good thing to see that uh, more and more allies understand that uh, they have to invest more in our security when times are uh, changing and when we see a more challenging and demanding security environment. In addition to doing more uh, on collective defense in Europe, increasing our presence in the eastern part of the alliance, we have also stepped up our efforts to fight terrorism and to stabilize our neighborhood. We continue uh, in Afghanistan, our biggest military operation ever, uh, we support the efforts of the coalition fighting ISIL. Uh, we train Iraqi officers. We provide support with our AWACS surveillance planes to the to, to, to British uh, so to, to planes from UK and from from the United States and from other countries conducting airstrikes over Syria and Iraq against Daesh or ISIL. And we also work with other countries in the region like Jordan and Tunisia to help them. Uh, being able to fight uh, terrorism and to stabilize their own uh, or to maintain their own countries as stable countries in uh, the region. Uh, we are also present in the Mediterranean. Uh, we have uh, deployed ships to the Aegean Sea to help cut the lines of illegal uh, trafficking over the Aegean Sea. The reason why I tell you all this is just to illustrate that NATO has been able to adapt and to change. The world has changed, so NATO has changed. And we are doing both uh, uh, um, collective defense in Europe, but we step up at the same time our efforts to stabilize our uh, neighborhood. And that's uh, perhaps the most important thing, is that NATO has proven again and again that when the security environment changes, we are also able to change. Uh, we are. Uh, changing the way we are delivering our core task, but our core task remains exactly the same, that by standing together, by uh, being strong, and by defending each other, we uh, make sure that all allies are safe, and uh, by that also uh, preserving peace and stability in Europe and in North Africa, no, North, North America. So for NATO, uh, it is important to continue to be united, and that's the most important strength of our alliance. I will stop there to make sure that we have time for some questions. Thank you so much.